Hello, first year students. In this video, we're going to look at a very important question, which is what exactly does this expression mean? What does it mean when we say that the limit as x approaches c of f of x equals l? This is a fundamental notion in calculus because it pins the theory of continuous functions and it's crucial for the actual definition of a derivative. So we're going to address this by having a look first of all at a concrete example, namely the example sine x over x. Then we're going to look at the epsilon delta sort of official definition that was introduced in the 19th century by Cauchy and then Weierstrass and forms a sort of theoretical foundation for a lot of uh, modern calculus. And then we'll look at a specific example of this uh, kind of question, looking at a particular uh, function and actually making some calculations with particular epsilons and particular deltas. Okay, so let's have a look at this function f of x equals sine x over x, which is a very interesting and important uh, function for uh, mathematics. Here is a graph of it near the origin. And it's like sine x, has an oscillatory aspect, except that the denominator here means that as we get uh, big, the, uh, the oscillation is damped and it becomes smaller and smaller. What's interesting for us is the behavior of this function at the point x equals zero. Something problematic happens there because both the numerator and the denominator are zero if we plug in x equals zero. So if we actually ask what is the value of this function at x equals zero, we get the answer zero over zero, which is undefined. So there's a question mark about what the actual value is. But nevertheless, we can graph the function for x values close to zero. And we can get something that looks like this. Let's have a look a little bit more carefully at the numbers that are involved. Here's a small table of values, which uh, shows us values of x and corresponding values of sine x over x. So when x has the value 1, then sine x over x has the value 0.84147 approximately. If we make x smaller to 0.1, then the value sine x over x becomes 0.99833. If we make x smaller yet at 0.01, we get 0.999983. And here are two even smaller values closer to 0 which really strongly suggests to us that as x approaches 0, the actual value of sine x over x approaches 1. Let's also make the note that this is an even function because sine x and x are both odd functions. In other words, if I replace x with minus x, then the value of the function doesn't change. So this is also the value of sine x on x when x is equal to minus 1. That's reflected in the graph here by the symmetry about the y-axis. Okay, so intuitively, or geometrically, we can see that as x approaches 0, sine x over x appears to approach the value 1. Now, in the 19th century, it became clear that we need to be a little bit more precise about what actually this statement means. What does it mean when we say that sine x over x appro approaches a particular value as x approaches another value? Can we make that more concrete, more precise? So Cauchy and Weierstrass introduced the epsilon delta definition of the limit of this expression at the limit as x approaches c of f of x equals l. So here is a picture that goes with this situation. We have our x and y axes. We have some function, say f of x, and some value c for x. And we're interested in the question, what happens to the function when x is near c? 
Well, in this case, we can see that uh, when x is c, the value of this function is, say, that value there, l, on the y-axis. Right. So let's have a look at this diagram. So Cauchy said, all right, the way we're going to interpret this is the following. That we want to say that if a small number epsilon greater than zero is given, then we can arrange that the difference between f of x and l is less than epsilon provided that the difference between x and c is less than delta. Okay, and officially we actually put another inequality here. Um, zero is less than absolute value of x minus c is less than delta just to uh, clarify that the actual value at x equals c is not required. So let's have a look at what this is saying. In the diagram, what it means. It means that if we choose an epsilon greater than zero, and that's a small number, and we're interested in the value of the function being within epsilon of l, well, that suggests a band around l, of width epsilon. Okay, so here's a width epsilon, a band. Okay. So what we're trying to do is we're trying to find a value of x or a range of values of x near c. That will ensure that if x is within that band close to c, then the function's values are within epsilon of L, in other words, in this range. All right, so in this particular diagram, how could we find a delta that, that makes this work? So let's have a look. Here's the graph of the function. Suppose we want this function to be within this band. Well, that means we're looking at this part of the uh, function, from here to here. So I think if we choose a delta which is about that size. Yeah. If we choose a delta which is about that size, then if x is anywhere inside here, then the function's values are going to be within epsilon of L. So if we choose any x inside this interval, x minus c is less than delta, then in this case, the function's values can only be between here and here, so it will be within this epsilon. All right, so that's the basic idea. And so here is the official definition. Uh, let's uh, call this star. So star means the following, that for any epsilon greater than zero, there exists a number delta greater than zero, such that zero is less than x minus c is less than delta implies that f of x minus l is less than epsilon. That's what it means for the limit as x approaches c of f of x to equal l. It means that for any epsilon that's given, no matter how small, we can find a delta greater than zero so that if x is within delta of c, but not actually equal to c, so bigger than zero, less than delta, then f of x minus l, the difference between the function's value and this limiting value l, is less than epsilon. Okay. So 
So this is a crucially important definition for the modern treatment of calculus. The epsilon delta definition of what it means for the limit as x approaches c of f of x to equal l.